Okay, so in this video, we will solve the following linear system in three equations and three variables, x, y, and z. As always, we construct the augmented matrix of the linear system. First row, 1, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. Second row, 2, 2, negative 1, negative 2. Third row, 1, 5, 2, 3. 1. We already have a leading 1 in the leftmost column top row, so we can kill the entries below it. So we do row 2 minus 2 row 1, and row 3 minus row 1. We first we copy row 1 as we're not changing it. Apply the first row operation, so 2 minus 2, 0. 2 minus 2 times negative 3 is 2 plus 6, positive 8. Negative 1 minus 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, 5. Same thing here, 6 minus 4, 6 minus 2, 4. Apply the second row operation, 1 minus 1, 0. 5 minus negative 3 is 5 plus 3, 8. 2 minus 3 minus negative 3 is 2 plus 3, 5. 1 minus negative 3 is 1 plus 3, 4. So we've killed the entries below our first leading 1. So we ignore, and we repeat, we hunt for our second leading 1. Well, it's not going to be here. Both entries are 8. So here we have no choice but to multiply row 2 by 1 over 8. So our leading 1 is on the top row. But here we'll swap the order of our operations. Usually, we will multiply, if we follow the algorithm to the letter, we will multiply row 2 by 1 over 8, and then kill the entry here. We'll have 5 over 8 here. It's simpler to go backwards about this. We'll kill the 8 first, we'll do row 3 minus row 2, and then we'll create our second leading 1. And of course, if we do row 3 minus row 2, as they are the same rows, we will get a row of zeros, which is okay. It's just a vacuous row. All it says is 0 is equal to 0, which is always true. And now we get our second leading 1 by multiplying row 2 by 1 over 8. And we'll get 0, 1, our second leading 1. Five over eight. Four over eight, one half. And once again, if you notice, we are now done with Gaussian elimination. As the bottom row consists of all zeros, we cannot get a third leading one. So x and y will be leading variable, y will be a free variable. The system is consistent, therefore we have an infinite number of solutions. And because we have now a free variable in z, we will now use, instead of backward substitution, we will use Gauss-Jordan elimination. As we've said in the previous video, this is the end of Gaussian elimination. This matrix is in Roy Schlund form, and now we apply Gauss-Jordan elimination. Let me write it here. And what is gauss jordan elimination? Well, as we've said before, all we do is we work from the last leading one up to the first leading one, and we introduce above every leading one all zeros. Well, this is our last leading one. There's a single entry above it. Let's kill it by doing row 1 plus 3 row 2. We 
can we copy the bottom two rows as we're not changing them? And then we apply the row operation. 1 minus 0, 1. Negative 3 plus 3, 0. Now negative 3 plus 3 times 5 over 8, that's plus 15 over 8. But negative 3 is negative 24 over 8. Negative 24 plus 9, negative 19. Oh, sorry. I'll do it here. So we have negative 3 plus 15 over 8. I went backwards about this. So we get negative 24 plus 15 over 8, which is negative 9 over 8. So negative 9 over 8. And here, negative 3 plus 3 times 1 half, so plus 3 over 2, gives us negative 6 plus 3 over 2, which gives us negative 3 over 2. We've killed every entry above our last leading one, so all zeros below and above. We move on to our next leading one. As there's nothing above it, then everything is vacuously zero, and so we're done. This is the end of Gauss-Jordan elimination. As we have stated in the previous video, if we had a larger augmented matrix, we would simply introduce above every other possible leading one, zeros, and once we're done, then we can finally write our general solution set. So, and the matrix, of course, at the end of Gauss-Jordan elimination, once everything not only below the leading ones but above is equal to zero, we can now write our general solution set in its simplified form as the matrix is in reduced row echelon form. Let us do so. Let us remind ourselves that the variables were x, y, and z. x and y are leading variables, as they both possess a leading one, but z is a free variable, as it does not have a leading variable, and so z is a parameter. We can say z equals t. And again, we have to s explicitly state that t can take on any real value. Okay, now we can solve for the leading variables. So y will equal 1 half. There's a positive 5 over 8 z on the left. On the right it becomes a negative 5 over 8 t, of course, because z equals t. We can solve for x using its leading one. So x equals negative 3 over 2. There's a negative 9 over 8 z on the left. On the right of the equal sign, it will become a positive 9 over 8 z, but again z equals t. So positive 9 over 8 t. And there you have it, the solution set of the original linear system. Now there is something we can do here to improve our final answer. What do I mean by improve? I mean, let's try and get rid of some of the fractions present in our final answer. z equals t, and t can range over all real values. So we can replace t by anything we want. As long as it still ranges over all real values, we still get the exact same solution set. There's a t over 8 here and a t over 8. If we want to get rid of the over 8, we can replace t simply by 8 and still allow t to range over all real numbers. If t can range over all real numbers, so can a t, right? And now this will simplify our final answer. So we'll get 1 half minus 5 over 8, and now we have replaced t by a t, 
So if you replace 8t by ht, you'll cancel the 8 and be left with negative 5t. Same thing for x, negative 3 half, plus 9 over 8, instead of t we have 8t, the 8's cancel and we're left with 9t. And now this is a slightly better form of our solution set. So every time you have a parameter being multiplied by a fraction, you can always rescale your parameter so as to get rid of those fractions. Now, if you notice, the constant terms here are fractions, but once you have fractions as constant terms, you cannot get rid of those. You're stuck with them. But a fraction multiplying a parameter can always be cancelled by rescaling your parameter. And that's it.